to the Encase V6 to V7 webinar series. During the next 20 minutes, we will continue the progression of our example case, covering the basics of tagging, using the Encase review package, bookmarking, reporting, and closing out your case. We will conclude with the review of some of the resources available to assist you in your move to V7. As a reminder, if you missed parts one or two of the series, you can find them on the guidance software website. Now with that, let's get started. To begin, let's open our sample case. Now in part two, we left off reviewing relevant items we found using index searching. Now in V6, at this point, you would probably begin bookmarking your findings. Now, however, however, in V7, you now have the option to filter down your findings through the use of tags and the in-case review package. Now, here's a quick review of tagging. Tagging allows you to categorize files for easy identification as you perform your investigation. To access tags, click the Tags drop-down menu and select Manage Tags. Here you will see the list of tags available to you. You can create new tags up to 64 per case. Now when you create a tag, you enter a name and display text. You can also select the frame and background color for the tag. To apply tags, you can either click into the tag field or select the file or files you desire and select Tag Selected Items. Then you can select the tag or tags you want to apply and click OK. Here's another tip. If you want to keep track of how many files you have tagged, select Show Tag Pane from the Tag drop-down menu. This will then add a small pane to your in-case screen, showing you a running total of tags and the count of files that you have tagged with each tag. Now this is a good way to, keep, to get a sense of the scope of the review that you have either completed or need to complete. This is how you as an examiner can use tags. Now tags also enable the use of the in-case review package. Let's take a look at this now. Now if you are like most examiners, you have a case backlog that just keeps growing. You close out a case and another one or two are added to your queue. We introduced the in-case review package to help you get a handle on your backlog by allowing others, non-in-case experts, to complete some of the evidence review. Here is how you can make use of this new feature. Now let's take a look at a search result we completed. Say for instance, the files need to be reviewed by the lead detective or case agent. All you do is select the files and click Review Package and select the Export option. From this screen you have several options. You can select to export only the checked rows, meaning the files you selected, you can include the folder, folder paths and if you want to display a link to the file. You can also select the fields you want exported as well as what tags you want to make available to the detective or case agent. Then you name the output file and click OK. Now this will create a .hta file and a folder that includes the data that was exported. At this point, you would need to send this data to the reviewer. Now you could copy it to a DVD, you could FTP it, email, or however you want to deliver the data. The reviewer can then click on the .hta file, which will open this screen. The reviewers can then look at the files and apply different tags based on the file's relevance to the case. The reviewer could also create new tags by clicking the Create Tag button. Enter a name and display text and clicking OK. You will notice that in this example, I selected to include a link to the file. So on the bottom screen, the reviewer can click on the link to open a copy of the file. The reviewer can tag files by clicking into the tag field. The reviewer could also, if needed, export the data to Excel for further review. Now once the review is completed, the reviewer clicks the Export button, gives the export file a name, and clicks OK. Now this creates a .nreview file. Now here's another key point. The reviewer does not need to send back the HTA file and the folder that you exported. 
The only thing that needs to be returned to you is the .nreview file, which is a markup file that the examiner can then import. The benefit here is that you are not sending large amount of data back to the examiner, as the .nreview file is very small and can be easily emailed. To import the reviewer's results, the examiner clicks the Review Package button again and selects Import. Next, the examiner selects the .nReview file and clicks Next. The examiner can then see which tags were used by the reviewer and can click Finish to import the results. Now immediately the examiner can now see the new tags that were applied by the reviewer. Another key point, there is no limit to the number or review package that can be created, which means when applicable the examiner can use as many reviewers as needed to help get through the investigation. So now that we have had others review some of the evidence in our case, let's move on to bookmarking and reporting. Now before we begin the actual bookmarking, let me explain our new reporting approach in B7. In previous versions of InCase, creating reports was a manual process that was typically repeated for each case. To make things easier in V7, we introduced report templates. With the report template, you can invest time up front, creating report formats for different types of cases, saving them and using them over and over again. Not only does this approach save time in the long run, it also allows you to generate consistent reports for every case. This can be especially helpful when you add a new examiner to your team. A senior member of, member of the team can share the report templates with the new team member, giving them a great starting point for their case reports. Now as part of this webinar series, we have prepared a new report template that you can download from either the support portal or from the link on this webinar series page. The new report template is a streamlined version of the forensic report template. To get this new template, or any template that you might create yourself, added to the list of available templates, you need to copy it into one of two locations. If you would like this report template to be shown as a default template, copy it into the location where you installed InCase. Now in my case, the location is C Program Files NK7 Template. Now any template you copy into this location will be shown in the template selection screen with a pound sign in front of the name. If you want this template to be shown without the pound sign, copy the template into your personal InCase folder. In my case, that's C users Steve.Salinas documents InCase template. Any template you copy into this folder will not be shown with the pound sign in front of it. Now one thing to note, if you share your examiner machine with another user, the templates you have in your My Documents folder will only be accessible to you, so just keep that in mind. Now I'm going to create a new case so that we can use this new template. Here's another tip. If for whatever reason you want to create a new case that includes evidence that you have already processed, you can use the same evidence cache for the new case. This means you do not have to reprocess your data. All you have to do is add the source evidence into your case and InCase will scan the evidence cache you selected for the caches associated with the source evidence. Once it finds the cache, it will mark your evidence as processed, and you are set. Keep this in mind as this is a huge time saver. Now let's take a look at this simple report template. The easiest way to access the report template is to click the report template link from the InCase case homepage. Or if you prefer, you prefer, you can open it from the View drop-down menu. You can see the report template is very simple, with an introduction section and a body section. When we view the report by clicking the View Report button, you can get a sense of how the report looks. You can see we, we have our evidence listed automatically, and sections for documents, internet artifacts, emails, and pictures. Now you may be asking yourself, where did those come from? Where did those sections come from? Well, that's a good question. These sections are the name of the bookmark folders that are part of the report template. So let's take a look at them now. I'll close the report template and go back to my case homepage. 
and click the bookmark links. Sure enough, we see those bookmark folders that are sections in the report. If I wanted, I could add another bookmark folder, for example, PDFs. Now let's check our report. And just like that, a new section was added to my report. Very simple. So with this report template, you can quickly and easily add as many bookmark folders as you need for your case, and they will be added to the report. Now here's an important note. If and when you add bookmark folders, you are in, an, in essence creating a new report template, since the template is a combination of both the formatting and the bookmark folders. If you want to be able to use this as a new template for other cases, you will need to save it. So let me show you how. All I have to do is select the Save as Template from the Case drop-down menu. Give it a name and it will be saved for future use. To verify it is available, I'll start a, the process of creating a new case. When I click New Case, you will see my new template is now shown in the list of available templates. Alright, to recap, the Simple Report template has been created in a way that allows you to add as many bookmark folders as you want without having to worry about formatting so give it a shot yourself. Now let's get to the bookmarking. If you look at the report template, the first section is user info. Now in our example there are a few spots where we could find this information. For instance from the records tab if we look at the evidence processor module results folder we can review the results from the system info parser module. From here we can drill down to the user accounts, select all, right click and select table view. Then we can create a name. In this example I will name this user accounts and click next. I then select the folder I want this bookmarked into, user info and click next. Now I can select which columns I want to include. I'll select name, username, full name and last login date and click finish. Now if we check the report we can see that the user account info has been added to the report including only the columns that we selected. This is how you can bookmark a table for different types of data that is relevant to your case. Now let's look at bookmarking documents. Here I am looking at a document that is relevant to my case. I'll select it, right click and select bookmark single item. I could enter a comment if needed then I select the destination folder, Documents. I could also highlight a portion of the document, right click, select bookmark transcript text, and enter a comment, and then I have to select my bookmark folder. I could also, from the text table, highlight relevant text, enter a comment, select the destination folder, and this data will be added to the report pretty straightforward. Now let's take a look at bookmarking a couple of emails. Through querying the index I was able to uncover several emails that are relevant to the case. I select them, right click and select bookmark selected items and then I select my destination folder. Very straightforward. Note that if I have bookmarked an email that has an attachment this will be noted in the report. Now let's take a look at bookmarking some internet artifacts associated with the evidence in my case. Again, I may have uncover, uncovered internet artifacts through searching or I can go directly to the records tab and review the processed internet artifacts. Here maybe I want to bookmark a table of recent bookmarks made. Then I can select the, the bookmark, table view, enter a name, select my bookmark folder, and the columns that would be interesting to anyone reviewing the report. I may also want to select pictures to bookmark. This is very simple. I select the relevant pictures, select my destination folders, and the items will be added to the report. By now I think you probably have a good idea of how to use bookmark functions. So let's take a look at the report that we have generated. From the view menu select the report and here you can see what we have so far. Scrolling through the report we can see the users, documents, emails, pictures, and so on that we have bookmarked. Now from here we can save the report in a text, RTF, HTML, XML, or PDF format. 
Just as an example, I'll save the report as RTF and select to open the file. You can see the report is automatically opened in Microsoft Word, which allows me to use the features of Word, such as watermarking, to finalize my report. This is also useful if you are using another tool in your investigation and want to combine the reports into one using Microsoft Word. So this looks good to me, so I will save this report as a PDF in preparation for sending it off to those who need to review it. Our investigation is now complete. The last step I will take is to use the Create Package feature, which enables me to archive this case. InCase will make an exact copy of everything I will need in the future if I need to reopen the case. I select Archive, select where I want the case to be stored, name the archive, and click Create. And we're done. As I mentioned in the previous webinars, the intent of this series is to help an investigator that is currently using V6 or has recently upgraded to V7 to get familiar with the investigation approach in this new version of InCase. From case preparation to case closure, closure, I have just scratched the surface of what is possible with the V7. I strongly recommend, if you haven't done so already, please review the InCase Essentials training that is available on the Guidance Software website. This free training covers what we discussed in a bit more detail and is a great reference for you to use as you continue to familiarize yourself with V7. I'd also encourage you to explore taking one of our V7 training courses, either on demand or in person, at one of our training facilities. We also have a course that is specifically designed with the V6 user in mind who is transitioning to V7, and it's called V7 Transition. This course will walk the V6 user through the investigation process in great detail. Last but certainly not least, I encourage all users to access the support portal regularly. The Guidance Technical Support Team actively monitors all submissions to the support portal and will do their best to give you an answer as quickly as possible. Beyond that, the InCase user community, community is extremely active on the portal, and I would bet there's a good chance that if you have a question about how to complete something in V7, you might find another user who has an answer for you. Be sure to check out our final webinar in this series where we will be giving a brief overview of the entire investigation process in V7 and a sneak peek at the upcoming release of InCase version 7.05. Have a great day.